So growing up, I didn't see a lot of representations of myself on television. I grew up mixed race. I grew up uh, speaking Polish, but as a person of color. So I don't think I ever really fit into a group. Um, so it's hard for me to really find uh, characters or stories that I personally was like, oh, that's totally like me. My name is Danny Pudi, and I'm an actor and writer. I grew up in Chicago, um, and I went to college at Marquette University in Milwaukee, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Then I started doing theater. I did some musical theater at Marquette and comedy, and I, I guess I got the bug. I realized that's what I wanted to do. Um, and after that, I went uh, to Second City in Chicago. And really at Second City is where I started to learn comedy in terms of performance and writing and the craft of it. And after that, I was like, okay, I'm in this. And then I moved to LA and gave it a shot. Uh, the first TV show I ever got cast on was The West Wing. I had one line, guest list for the Cleveland event. You probably didn't see me because I was like moving off. So it was actually more like, guest list for the Cleveland event. That was me. Gilmore Girls was, I think, my first real role uh, in television. I played a student named Raj at Yale University, which was super exciting for my family because they told everybody I was a student at an Ivy League institution. And that was really fun for my family to say, my son's at Yale. And it really gave me a sense of what it's like to be on a set every day. Shortly thereafter, I landed Community, which uh, was life-changing. Uh, as soon as I read the script, I was trembling because it was a show that I connected to in many ways. The character of Abed itself, I had never read somebody um, who was uh, painted in such a beautiful, humane way and funny. Um, and it was also one of those experiences where I was like, I want to be in the show, but I also, I will watch this show. I would like, felt like uh, it was written for me. My agents uh, wrote, this is the role that was meant for you. And they have only said that once. Um, since then, they've, they've never said that again. <laughs> um, life is really good. I mean, I am married. I have two beautiful kids. They're seven years old. Um, we live in California, and it's this wonderful transition phase, right? I'm, I've been working on TV for a while. I'm working on a new television show called Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet. It's the story about a group of developers behind this massive role-playing game. Uh, Rob McElhaney, Charlie Day are the producers. Megan Gans is the showrunner, writer. And the name of my new piece is Running. It's a, it's a personal story. I've never done anything like this, and I've sort of been going through this kind of transition of dealing with my father's loss and also kind of getting in touch more with my, um, with my own identity. And so that's what this piece is really kind of exploring. Danny is this sort of heralded Indian American actor who broke a lot of barriers for Indian American actors uh, when he was on Community. And I think people have always had this image of who he is and a lot of the show is about who he really is and uh, struggles he may have had. One of them being that um, he ha didn't have much of a relationship growing up with his Indian father and actually is much closer to his Polish side of his family, his mother's side of the family. Um, and it brought up a lot of questions, I think, for us about how he gets cast and and the, our, the performative aspect of our identity versus the really more complicated aspects of our identity that I think this piece explores really beautifully. No one's really, no one's seen the show. No one's ever seen this. So this is the first time we're doing this. For years, my mom made me take Polish dance lessons. Finally, last year, I said enough. <laughs> Every Saturday, while my friends were riding huffy bikes and eating fun dip, I was dancing the mazurek. Rastwatsche, 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 rastwatsche. My name wasn't meant for Polish dance. Pronouncing my last name isn't easy. Sometimes I get, is it putty? Sometimes I get, is it poo dye? I just wanted a normal name, like the rest of my friends in class. Like Kroplewski, Lewandowski, Matejko, Pazjora, Polenowski, Przintuskiewicz. I guess my favorite question is, where are you from? That's a complicated question. I'm from Chicago, but uh, my parents are from two other places. My mother was born in Poland, my father was born in India, and uh, I guess dealing with my identity has always been um, a fun issue in my life, and I think that's what this piece explores is 
trying to figure out who I am today. This show deals with the themes of identity, of belonging, of feeling alienated. It also deals a lot with sort of philosophical questions I think we ask as children that never go away even when we are adults. And we see that really beautifully through Danny's questions for his dad, questions he had as a kid growing up, and now Danny's kids' questions for him. So it has this beautiful frame of of how we go through life thinking um, we need answers to questions that in fact may be sort of unanswerable. Our process has been really trying to figure out the spine of the play and what is the thing that's really kind of connecting all of this. A lot of this has to do with me running. I'm a big runner. I run marathons, half marathons. I run all the time. And using that as sort of the um, the idea of why I'm, why I'm running, kind of exploring that idea um, and tying that to my relationship uh, with my father and my son. Where am I from? Okay, I, mean, I guess it depends on who's asking, right? If they're wearing Chicago sports gear, I'm from Chicago. If they are speaking Polish, mam rodzinę w Białymstoku i Warszawie. If they're South Asian, I'm from Andhra Pradesh. And if it's a white nationalist, my answer is a white woman's birth canal just like you. <laughs> and then I run. I'm from a family of immigrants that made tremendous sacrifices to get me here today. Okay, so when I was 11 years old, um, I went to Poland. I was excited to see where I was from for the very first time. I thought everything would make sense. We boarded this bus in Warsaw when I heard the word spowrotem. Spowrotem means to go back. I turned my head and I noticed this man. And he was staring at me. Spowrotem, he said once again. He was telling me to go back. At the time, my impulse wasn't to run, but to correct him and say, actually, I'm 49% Polish, 23 in Miseso, so technically you can only send half of me back. <laughs> but I didn't speak. I pretended to not understand him, and I angled my body toward the nearest exit and concentrated on looking safe. My dad left my family when I was two years old, and I grew up with my Polish mother in Chicago. In middle school, I told my classmates that I was the young Maharaja in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and everyone believed me. In 2007, I booked my first TV role on Gilmore Girls. I played a student named Raj at Yale University with one line, Computer crashed again! In 2008, I was frisked three times before a flight to Boston. In 2009, I booked my first lead role on an NBC TV show called Community. Three out of four people congratulated me for being on Parks and Recreation. <laughs> in 2012, my wife gave birth to our half Irish, quarter Polish, quarter Indian twins. No one believes I'm the father. In 2018, I walked past a woman in a bar who saw my face and yelled, terrorism. In 2019, I checked into a hotel and said, reservation for Danny Pudi. The receptionist said, I'm sorry, there is no reservation under that name, but uh, we do have a Tammy Ludi. <laughs> That's me, I tell her. <laughs> and now I have a new alias. <laughs> the hardest part is that it's just me. I think I'm used to collaborating. I love ensemble comedy. I love um, being given a role and then sent off to go dive into the world and then come back and work with people uh, to piece it together. And this is me kind of really figuring out what is the story that I want to tell. So that's hard because I am in it, you know, and I'm still trying to figure out the distance from it. What is the, like, what's the end line? What's the uh, ending point? And perhaps there is no ending, you know? I think that's what I'm trying to learn. Critical distance is the ability to look at a personal event that happened to you and to be able to reframe it for a story or to be able to glean from it a question or what you learned or an idea. We call this narratorial distance too, where there's someone telling the story who has experienced it, but right now their question of it may be different from when they were going through it. I was standing outside when I saw him pull up. I was worried that I wouldn't recognize him. It's been 20 years since I saw him. He was wearing a red coat and driving a Toyota Corolla. And he jaywalked across the street and came right up to me and said, Hey there, Dan. His voice was softer than I imagined. Hey, Dad, I said, right back. He came in for a hug, and I, I smelled the cigarettes on him. We stepped into the lobby of the hotel and ordered coffees. And I watched him. 
I watched him pour cream and stir two packs of sugar into his cup. This was his routine. I like my coffee with zero sugar and a gentle splash of cream. Can't be too creamy. It needs to be the color of my own skin in summertime. We sat across from each other. And for a moment, no one spoke. We were like these two chess players stuck thinking about past moves. I told him I woke up with a head cold. His advice was one word. Benadryl. I asked questions. When is your birthday? What did you like to do as a kid? When did you come to America? What was it like when you first got here? What was it like when you said goodbye? When you first got here, did you feel alone? Why did you live in Lakeview? And how do you say Grandpa in Telugu? After our session, we walked to the elevator. And I studied his face. He was youthful looking. Nice skin and a full head of hair. And I couldn't stop staring at his hands. His fingers were delicate, long and thin. And he was fidgeting, just like me. Inside the elevator, we talked about the Bulls, Jimmy Butler, and Derrick Rose. He followed sports. And we were having this normal conversation, like a normal father and son. When we stepped outside, we hugged, and he walked off. I watched him walk across the street, and in my mind I thought of this quote, the best time to plant a tree was yesterday, the second best time is now. But it was too late to say anything. He was already getting in his car, so I just said, bye, Dad. Running is about one person, Danny's journey of finding his father who left the family uh, when Danny was just a kid and reconnecting with his father and in the process asking questions about who he is uh, as a father, as an actor, as a person, um, and really because very specifically also about his cultural background. Yeah, I'm excited to say these words out loud. Uh, I've never said all these stories out loud. I've written some of them. I've said, I've had portions of them that I've said out loud, but I've never put this all together in one piece in front of strangers. So uh, that is scary, but also I feel like gonna, gonna be very valuable for me to just see how that lands on people and myself. I think that I need that at this point in time. Now I just wanna tell the story. I wanna just release it and just like, let it out. And I think that's gonna be just good for me as a human being to like get that off my chest. I, I think I'm still at like A, I'm trying to get to B. So I, I'm, I'm aware I'm not trying to get to C yet. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out what is the best, I'll be closer to telling the story I wanna tell. And that's what I'm hoping after this, that I'll be closer to telling the story that I ultimately wanna tell. The one thing I always like doing is kind of going back to my roots. I think that's the one place where I feel most at home, where I could uh, truly experiment, make a lot of mistakes, which is really nice, um, and be with people. Because I think uh, that theater is very unique in that being in one room with people in that one moment together, kind of feeling what something is for the very first time, uh, it's pretty special and terrifying, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm.